Okay, it is 531 and I would like to call the uh, March 21st meeting of the Capital Planning Committee meeting to order. And the first item of business is the minutes actually from our last minute, our last meeting. So I was hoping that everyone had a chance to review those in advance. Make a motion to approve those minutes. Second. Okay, a motion's been made and a second. All those in favor or any discussion? Hearing none, I'll call for a vote. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? The motion passes. Okay, the uh, next item of business is our upcoming proposals, capital proposals for the annual town meeting. And thank you very much, uh, Linda, for doing this uh, spreadsheet. It's really helpful. And would you mind if I were to uh, turn it over to you so you could give us an executive summary of, of the sheet for us, the bottom half anyway. Okay, I am able to share. Want me to do that? That would be nice. Okay. Tell me if that is showing up. Well, we got the top and part of the bottom. There, a little bit more. Just yeah, I think you're you're there. One more line. Yep. Yeah. I can make it just a little bit smaller. Is that cover the whole thing? Can you can you see it though? Hey. Uh, Okay. Well, you don't have to, you don't have to see better, it all. Linda. Okay. Well, we don't have to see it all at once. So, um, sips. Here yeah, we that's, go. That's you asked perfect. for it. <laughs> I love it. Okay. Um, I, I, once again, I have to do something with these, with our faces. Um, so they're not in the way. Show small active speaker hide thumbnail video. Okay. All right. So that should do it. So for this sheet, um, this is our fiscal, everything that was asked in fiscal 22. And so what you're seeing in green is what uh, came in at the beginning of the fiscal year and we handled it at the fall town meeting. Um, what's also included in here are a few other items that are not necessarily uh, town meeting items, but uh, uh, David Nixon always had them in here. I think the only one is like, for example, up uh, near the top there where select board slash DPW chapter 90 program, he would always put that in to, uh, and um, obviously it's paid out of chapter 90 and not something we bring to town meeting, but he would do that to show that we are uh, the amount of capital that is otherwise being spent. Um, also, remember, we did the trailers that were out of ARPA. We didn't need to do those at town meeting, but that was an item that is in there. Um, uh, the, 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 there's a map project there for MS4, and uh, I think we're still waiting on, um, no, we're not waiting on a grant. I don't think it has been applied for, but um, initially when, um, when there's, when the capital reports were put together, we thought we would be in phase three, by, but but we're out really just in phase two still. So mm -hmm. I probably should just bump that to next year. So that's everything we did in the fall. And then in blue is where we are now. So a little bit different than what we had done before. And this was important to, to Paul and um, we like it, is that if a request comes in, it's going on the sheet. So you're the capital planning committee. You get to review everything that comes in and uh, we'll take it from there. I put them into the categories, high, highway, water, sewer, and schools. Um, we also have the CPA items in there as we did above, even though the, this committee doesn't, um, necessary, doesn't necessarily um, vote on them but they're in there to show it's a capital item and they will be on the Springtown meeting. Um, 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 let's see. So we have, um, let me start from the bottom because the schools are in one swoop. Um, oh, I know what I wanted to do. And then maybe you wanted to, to take them individually, Carolyn, because you talked to the department heads but the other one thing I wanted to say is when you're looking at what founding category I put these in, this was 
just for starters. I just put them in there because we needed to put them somewhere. Obviously, anything for water and sewer is going to go over on water and sewer. As far as the borrowing amounts, I just kind of said, oh, over a certain amount, maybe we would do it by ballot. But anyways, these are not those two categories for borrowing within the levy and then the next borrowing one. Those are just where I put them for now. These are decisions you have to make as to what we're going to handle at, at this time and where we're going to do them. That's completely up for discussion. But um, so Carolyn, it might be better if you go over them because you, you met with Scott. So Paul, is it okay if I kind of set the stage a little bit of where we are at with, especially DPW? Would, could I uh, ask for a little bit of time just to kind of set, set the stage? Absolutely. Okay. so. I've been here about a year and a half and there have been a substantial amount of changes in that short time, um, specifically with staffings, which has, will impact this capital plan. Um, most significantly, those changes ha have happened uh, in the DPW. So not only have we had a new town administrator, our HR director resigned, that position spends a lot of time with, with uh, DPW. We are happy that we ha we're hiring someone who's going to start in April, and we've had a consultant, Deb Radway, helping us um, for a limited amount. So we'll start to see some help with that. But I, I have to highlight the transition that's happened in DPW. Uh, the director resigned. Before that, our operations manager, Sharon, she, re she retired and brought a wealth of knowledge of budgeting with her. Um, and uh, Jessica Perrin, who was her assistant, the admin assistant, she also left. So we had a complete new staff and administration. That means learning where the bills go, where lose, knowing how some invoices go to water, some go to sewer, some go to DPW. So it was a huge learning curve. And I can say they're still learning, but they are, the new staff there are so good and are gonna be as good as Sharon was in a, in a year, few years. Um, but as you know, our DPW director, Chris Okafor, Okafor has also left. And so our field superintendent, Scott McCarthy, um, is our interim uh, DPW director. And Scott, has he's doing both field superintendent and the DPW director. And I can tell you, he has been doing, he's outstanding. He's um, done his due diligence. He resubmitted the request that Chris had brought in. And he met with his staff, his frontliners, he met with vendors to get real accurate numbers for everything that he's um, put forth. And he's, he's he, we worked together a lot and we sorted out what things need to come and maybe some things that had been previously submitted that can wait there. Um, although there was a level of priority that we've talked about, um, I really think it's imperative that this committee take that strong role in prioritizing it along with Scott um, you will be, in, Scott can answer any question and if he doesn't have the answer, he will get the information for you. But I just wanted to set that for you because we're giving you everything that we believe right now DPW needs pretty critically. And we don't, we, we don't, we're not going to have enough money possibly to, to do all this, but I want your input as you meet with Scott to, to prioritize. You guys know Hadley, you know the history. I'm still, it's a year and a half. Um, so I really want you guys to take that important role that you guys have to help prioritize that. Um, and also COVID, COVID really kind of put a reset on a, on a five year, never mind a 30 year plan um, that you guys know supplies, services, um, just the cost of supplies. It's unpredictable. And with the, the global impact of what's happening now, we really have no idea what, what it's gonna cost a year from now to do some of these projects. So our goal is to do them as soon as possible once they get voted on or if they get voted on. Um, and the reason I'm saying that is uh, Linda and I, actually, since I've been here, we've been going over old projects that haven't been finished or completed. And so this fall, we, we um, made sure that we sent out uh, the summary of capital projects that aren't done, haven't been completed or have leftover money. And I really wanted people to designate who oversaw those projects and what was their plan of completion. 
And so we've been pretty successful in uh, with a proposal to pull back about $200,000 based on all of those conversations with boards and committees, with department heads as well. So we're feeling a lot more confident, but we still have a ways to go. We still have, um, you know, we're still going to have some projects that are going to be spending money. Um, but I just wanted to make sure we just weren't having departments asking for more money for more projects and hadn't completed the old ones. So we're getting there. We're not as far as we'd like to be, but we, I thought 200,000 was pretty significant um, from, you know, quite a lot of, quite a lot of projects that needed to be um, kind of updated. So I just wanted to just share that with you. Scott is going to be great giving you a lot of information when you meet with him. I will pipe in. We've worked a lot together with infrastructure. Um, and hopefully during some of these meetings, I can talk to you a little bit more seriously about the dike and um, some maintenance plans that we need to look at in the future. So that's all, that's all I, I wanted to just present that. So I don't know at this point, do you want to go through each line item or you, you tell me um, without having Scott here or the schools here, how would you like to go through that? Well, it, it might be a good idea, Carolyn, to give us a real, a real quick uh, synopsis of each one. I know we had the backup and thank you so much for the, you and Linda for sending that along. It's nice, you know, not only to get the uh, request sheets, which has the justifications on there too, but also it was backed up. And, and as far as the DPW is concerned, it was backed up with actual uh, quotes that Scott yeah. sought out. So that was nice. Yeah, uh, Carolyn, before you do that though, I'm just a little curious on this 200,000 here. Is that, money that could be used or is it already earmarked could it be used to help out to offset the cost of some of these items on the sheet the blue items yeah linda you want to address that we were talking about that right before the meeting right um i do need to find out we have the accountant coming on friday um the one time i've done redirection is is it seemed like a really uh easy and obvious one is when we changed when we worked on the fall on the gas tank one where we were, we were, what do we call it? Re repurposing the gas tank article instead of being for, uh, hmm, whatever it had been, we, we moved it over to repairs or replacement. And uh, I am less clear. You, you may know more than me about this, Paul, but uh, I do want to meet with the accountant. Um, I'm not, I'm less clear when we've got borrowing articles. Uh, let's say that we've got money left over, uh, 20,000 left over for a truck and we just go to town meeting and redirect that 20,000 from a truck for carpeting for the school. I mean, I, I, I don't know how, if they are supposed to be related. Um, the advantage, if you, if it sounds crazy, why would we bother doing it? The advantage is we don't have to go for a ballot vote. We've all, the town has already voted to borrow that money. Um, and if we could redirect the money at a town meeting, it will save us time and steps and, and not necessarily cost us anything more. Um, but I don't know what that process is. Right. Still, uh, I know I've been out of, out of municipal and yeah. that for a while, but I know when I was there, you could do it for an equal, any capital item for a equal or a longer period of time if the borrowing authority is for the new requested item is for an equal or longer term. I don't know if that has changed. Okay. Okay. Um, you know, if that makes right. any sense, you know, if there's a 10 year borrowing, you could go and use that money for a, a purpose that would be a borrowing term of 10 years or longer. Right. If that makes um, any sense to everyone else. It, it does. We have some things, uh, if we haven't borrowed for it yet, I'm just not going to borrow the full amount. I'm trying to find the example of the one um, where we did borrow and we have the money left over. Oh, um, once you just rescind the borrowing authority. We are going to, yeah, we'll rescind that borrowing th authority. So, um, so what I was hoping to do with her is get a list of those kinds of things. So rather than just going and rescinding at town meeting that we also can take that extra step and that you would then, then I would also be able to provide you that information in a future meeting um, that we had that money available um, to apply to one of these projects. It just gives you a little bit more to work with. 
right. um, is that two hundred thousand? That money is just—is it just borrowed funds that haven't been spent, or does it also include a borrowing authorities that haven't been actually uh, borrowed? Well, we have we we voted and agreed on seventy five thousand for the asphalt roller. It only cost forty eight thousand. So we have twenty seven thousand dollars. That you actually now I haven't borrowed for that yet because uh, it was within this fiscal year. I don't know. Do I have the bar option of borrowing for the full seventy five thousand, and that gives us? 27,000 to apply to something else? Is that? By right, you should just be borrowing what you actually need to. Okay. All right. Well, there's that one. I know there's another one in here and I don't want to take your time to, because I, we do, I do keep the sheets. Um, I mean, I do keep these records um, of what else. So you don't think I should over borrow on something intentionally to apply it to something else. Not that makes sense. I mean, that, that's very it's logical. Hard. If it's after the fact, you already borrowed the money, of course, but right. not, not to go out and borrow if you haven't yet. Okay. Yeah, when you have knowledge that it's going to be less than what, okay. the, what the borrowing authority is for. Okay. Well, I'll, I'll make a list of things like that. And I also need to, uh, it's not just that, that I have the information and need to make the list, but this is the time. Um, we can't do it too early uh, ahead of town meeting because I don't know the department has don't always know what they're going to spend. But part of going through these older, these pre-author uh, uh, earlier articles, the ones already uh, authorized, is to start identifying um, what we can pull back, both with borrowing and if anything was out of capital or if anything is going back to free cash. Um, it's a uh, it, it's a little it's a little tricky. We have because we've got some, we have a few orphaned um, articles in here that nobody really wants to claim and uh, until we start grabbing it back. So there's gonna be a little bit of back and forth over the next week or two with department heads. Um, one example of that is the $13,000 for the DPW school zone lights. It falls somewhere in the crack between DPW and school zone and nobody is really quite sure what they were gonna do with that or if that's enough money to cover it. That's out of, that, that came out of free cash. You know, for, for us to have that money sitting in free cash since 2018, for four years, nothing's been done. That's money that um, we should be pulling back. And, and if that's available for something else that's more important right now, that's on this list, then we should be able to apply it over there. It doesn't mean these abandoned articles, the ones that we walk away from now, we could bring them back. But it's always possible that a prior that a prior authorized article is actually a lower priority than something that's come up right now that needs to be done this summer. So it's a, it's a little bit more manipulating of these articles than has been done in the past, but you know, tough times. <laughs> hey, Linda. Um, so this is only my second time since joining the committee, but um, last time around you gave us an idea of how much we had kind of the spin within the levy or what your kind of ballpark right. figure is. Do you have that amount? So I just something to think about as we're going through this. Right. Uh, we had said, uh, uh, we had increased it to about 400,000 <laughs> at that time. And if you look up in the green, you see that the amount we spent in the fall was 354,000, almost 355,000, which okay. means we were mostly spent in that amount. So when you see I put 200,000 back, that's really more than we can spend in borrowing within the levy. Unless I find items, unless we can identify items that we don't need the full borrowing for. And then that starts going back into the pile. So we start chipping away at not just the ones above, not just the ones um, in green from earlier this year, but the ones we authorized from, from last year. So the idea of this is, um, uh, and we were able to increase it because finance committee did increase it again this this fall. Was it? I think another fifty thousand, wasn't it, Amy? I think they increased it by fifty thousand, the amount that we pay within the levy. Um, which means, I mean, if if we were if every dollar was accurate, what that would mean is if we're spending three hundred fifty thousand dollars in debt and interest on borrowing within the levy, that means that we're opening up three hundred fifty thousand that we can borrow going forward. But in reality, we can borrow more than that, or we can authorize more than that, because 
someone buying a $72,000 truck is going to ask for 80. So there's all the request we actually, and, and which is a good thing because it's more frustrating, honestly, when they have to come back for an extra 5,000. So when they're generous in what they're asking or they're, uh, yeah, when they're yeah, kind of generous on what they're asking for items, then I think we kind of increase that amount that we can do. So theoretically, maybe we could do a um, hundred thousand out, out of borrowing within the levy um, because we're still within the same fiscal year. It's, it's not 350, 400,000 for per town meeting, unfortunately. Um, and if we could get to the point where we were just doing it one, once a year, I just don't know if that's possible though. We, we keep aspiring to that, um, but needs, needs come up more than once a year. <laughs> and so it maybe is, about a, about a hundred thousand, roughly within the levy, is what's left. Right. Okay. About a hundred, uh, and maybe more than that. Uh, more than that, if I can, uh, if we can start pulling back um, earlier ones or identify, um, identify that earlier borrowing wasn't fully needed, or anything that gets returned. So, I mean, it's definitely um, something I'm. It, it needs to be worked on. It doesn't just happen. Department heads don't just, you know, call up and say, I'm not going to spend all that money. I mean, we, each one needs to be, uh, it needs to be chased down with every department head. And we have a little talk about where they stand with the purchase of that vehicle, whether they think they're going to be proceeding with a particular project this year or not till next year. So um, uh, fortunately, most of it comes down to Scott. <laughs> a lot of it is DPW. There are certainly a number of other ones, but um, and the rest is within town hall and, and the school. So I'll work on that. Uh, Linda, I was going to ask, uh, you know, ones like the payloader, for example, has a split funding source. Mm -hmm. And Which one? I'm just picking on the payloader, you know, uh -huh. and you have a bar yes. for 175 and then you have sewer for the, or water for the same amount. Is the water portion going to be funded with debt service in the water or is that a, a direct like yeah a I, I assume we're going to be doing the borrowing and then just allocate it out to the two and honestly even when they say highway water or highway water sewer um one thing we have to find out when he comes in is does that mean a third a third a third or is that share between three departments does not necessarily mean equally but i've made the assumption that it was equal so i put it in the two in the two columns um, but, um, uh, yes, I, I think at, at this level, I think we have, uh, ugh, just went out today. Um, how much, let's see, was in the, uh, well, anyways, water has over a million dollars in reserves. And if we spend it on items, 310,000, 175,000, we spend it in chunks like that at a time it's gonna wipe it out pretty quickly and mm -hmm. not leave us the reserve that we it's really meant to do. Um, as long as interest borrowing rates aren't a big issue for it. And, and at the moment they're still not, I don't know what's gonna happen over the next couple of years, but I actually do think it's a good idea to continue to do it, to do the borrowing and to pay it out of the reserves over time. Right, so I guess a portion between water and or sewer and the uh, general, general. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, and again, I believe those amounts that you have up there on the sheet, those are the gross amounts. Those aren't the debt service, the end no. debt service amounts. That's the gross amount. Yes. Okay. Yeah, the capital. Yeah. Yes. And, and, pro and maybe they'll come in under that too. And I don't borrow until after the purchase, generally. So... Okay. If, they, if they're saying 350,000 and it comes in at 325, we're just going to borrow 325. It, the exception is when you're really close to the end of the year and they've got something that's on its way. Um, we, and we don't know actually, actually how it's going to fall out. I will borrow the full amount, make sure we don't run into uh, trouble at the end of the year, but that's when we end up having excess, um, right. excess borrowing. All right, thanks. And that was a, supposed to be a few minutes, but we had quite a, a journey there. Now, Carolyn, if you want to take off and give us your... Uh... I got a question for you, if you don't mind, on this. Um, you talked... Yeah, thank you. You talked about the um, how the sewer reserves will pay um, 
for the borrowing. Could out of the school, the school has almost like a reserve fund and that can we do the same out of the schools? Um, the, the school is, uh, is the money spent on the school is still out of general fund. The reason sewer and water are set aside is not just because they have a pocket of one, money the way the school has a pocket of money. You're right, they do. They have their school choice funds, but it's because they're because they're enterprise funds mm -hmm. um, that they have to be set aside. And the same would be true of Hadley Media if, if they had that level of funds. So uh, as far as for the school, it is all general fund money. Um, uh, if they were to choose, and they have, last year they pulled all of their, pulled their capital articles last year because of the uncertainty of where we stood on so many fronts. They just, they just pulled them and said, we'll just pay for them out of school choice. So they did do that last year. Um, you know, it, you know, we can, we can, we can wish they'd do it again, but yeah. they're entitled to ask for it out of, uh, out of the general funds, just like, just like the other departments. They're entitled to do the, to make this request. I I agree that they're entitled to do the request, and I also the other question would be is I don't see that police or fire are on here at all. Yeah, they didn't have requests, did they, Carolyn? Police, we are leasing their vehicle, and um, regarding fire, no, because they did get the ambulance bill. They should be getting the ambulance shortly. So no, they did not have a request. Yeah, well, they had. I'm, I'm I'm going back up. The, they had big requests in the fall, uh, and the cruiser, yeah, right, got pulled out. But their uh, communication equipment. But there was more to that. There was there the communication equipment was that was only a portion of it, and they said that they were going to be back to ask for more. It's in their budget. Why is it in their budget and not in the capital? For the going. Go ahead. <laughs> I, I think it's going to be uh, it's for one thing, it's 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 almost become an operating expense. It's something that they have to keep in their budget to maintain on an ongoing basis. So it made more sense instead of uh, because it they really didn't see that there would be an ending to it. It's going to be something they're constantly going to have to maintain and update. And but it's equipment purchase, correct? And it's they it's they likened it to the police cruiser in that um, he has a five he is able to get a five year lease with a zero buyout at the end so he's buying it evenly over five years so he's putting a fifth of it in the budget each year for five years and um, part of that is just just what Carolyn said and then there will be going on and rolling into new expenses on that front that he felt that they would be able be wanting to continue that and also part of it just like what um what mike mason chief mason was doing with the police cruiser is they're 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 backing out of the the capital competition in a way because we have they know we only have so much that we can spend in this way so they are looking for these alternative ways to get it into their budget Amy, whichever way you do it, there's always an argument to do it the other way. And and you're on you're on finance committee, and you you certainly can weigh in and and uh, advise one way or the other. But you know, we we just kind of that's what we did this year. <laughs> but um, th there's certainly good arguments on both sides. Okay. Yeah, I understand. Okay, Carolyn, we'll let you get going now. But before that, again, one more. <laughs> Uh, Amy, uh, you were nice enough last time. This is more of a nuts and bolts type sort of like thing to keep the minutes at our last meeting. Are you doing that for this meeting too? Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll do that. Great. Thank you very much. Okay, finally, Carolyn, you're okay. on. Yeah, some, some of these will be a little bit self-explanatory, um, but I will uh, give you the knowledge I have. And my sheets aren't in the same order, so it might take me a minute to flip back to the sheets. But um, the drainage projects, as you know, and I think in, uh, as I was looking at old capital meetings, that's kind of been an issue that's been brought up a lot. But th there's a specific area, uh, which is Breckenridge, Huntington, and another street that has had ongoing issues um, that really need to be addressed. So um, that is just for the design aspect of it. It is a huge, huge project. So um, it it was going to become to you piecemealed one at a time uh, 
per year or, or twice a year, but it really made more sense. This project was a project that would be, they all impact each other, each street impacts each other. So that is for the design services um, for that. Uh, with the goal that when uh, grants came available, I can't get the grants without the designs being done. So this would help us get to that point, especially each year when I submit grants to the one stop, the community one stop, um, most of them require that you have to have design services in place. So this is a real good starting point. This has to get, a, it has to get addressed. Scott will definitely be able to go into more of the technical detail of, of that. Um, and David, if I don't, since you're the liaison with the DPW, if I don't go into the right language or understanding, the, especially the vehicles, please pipe in. Okay. Um, so do you have any questions about that drainage project? It's Breckenridge, French Street, and Huntington. And th this is not anything to do with ditch cleaning, right? Because we told them to take that off and put it in the maintenance budget, right? No, it is not. Okay. The di yes, thank you, Dave. The ditch cleaning is now in the operating budget. Uh, the plow truck sander. If I'm right, this is the truck that is right now in the garage getting, you know, the, the steps just fell off of it and they're soldering it together. It has been a, it's been thousands of dollars trying to re, um, fix this. Um, this and the payloader, if I'm correct, um, and the mower, I think are so old that they're too difficult to get parts for. And we're not spending two and four, $300. We're having to go outside to a higher level, level mechanic and we're spending thousands on thousands of dollars. I, I think, you know, I'm looking at all of these together. Um, the mower, I don't think is working anymore. If I, if I remember correctly. Um, so those three vehicles specifically, they've aged out and need to be replaced. And again, Scott will have more details about that. Uh, the well filters you have, you do every year. Mm -hmm. um, did you have questions about the vehicles, Paul? Oh, no. no. Okay. Um, the filters has been in the budget for a few years. Um, so that's an extremely expensive process. And so I think that's been um, an amount that's been put in to build up and have that money in there. The propane tanks. Um, we rent several of the propane tanks that are in DPW buildings, not in them, outside of them. And um, we have found, uh, I think the fire department has purchased their own. There is a significant savings if you purchase your own pr propane tank, um, basically because you can shop around. When you lease them or rent them, you've got to pay the cost of the company you're renting from. So this gives us a lot more flexibility um, to look at what the cheapest rates are. So that is a proposal to replace those tanks. Um, the painting of the wells, that is a maintenance issue. Those have to be done. Again, Scott will be able to go into more of the technical reasons. David, do you have anything to add to those? I've, this is for, I think, the water tanks, the water storage tanks at, at the well locations, I believe. Um, and that's why the dollar amount's so large. It's not just a small little building. It's the, the, those massive however many tens of thousands of gallon tanks that are up on the, on the mountain. Right. The, uh, the pump station roof that I, 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 according to Gary and Scott, that has needed to be replaced for a long time. And that is the estimate for that. Those are all the pump stations, right? Carolyn? The Watch pumps. It. Pump stations. No, it's the no. I think they're only talking about one pump station. I'm. I th they've been I referring think, to it as one roof. I think it is for all of the different. Um, oh, thanks, stations. David. Yeah, no, sorry. I just uh, we have nine pump stations, I believe, around town, and most of them are the original shingle roofs. And I think their plan is to put standing seam metal roofs on most of them, if not all of them, which should last, you know, forever at this point, instead of having to reshingle them. I, th I think this is the same one that, that Scott mentioned. Okay. I do want to get more information. It is on your sheets, but the missions communication is an extremely critical 
um, tech, it's, it's, uh, it's critical technology that they need. Um, and I'm sorry, I was rely. I thought you'd be asking Scott a lot of these questions. So, um, so this is to upgrade the emission systems controls due to dismantling of the 3G network. Without the upgrade, we are in violation of a, of a DEP permit. Keep going. Sure. Okay, school carpeting, that's the administrative offices need to replace their carpeting. Projectors and screens, uh, the Wi-Fi at Hadley Elementary School and upgrade the network switching. Those are all pretty self-explanatory. Now, where are those, you know, on the sheet, I was looking at it for the projectors and screens. There wasn't any, uh, you know, justification given on that particular one, but also where, what school is that going into? Or is it going into, are they putting them into both of them? Chris you know, was, Chris from the schools yeah. is going to have to answer that. Or, more, more of those details. Yeah, the sheet was blank, you know, when you look at all yep. the other projects where everyone else had a uh, rationale or justification. Mm -hmm. That one had absolutely nothing in it. So, yeah, it could, it, it took a couple tries to get some of those narratives, but I, I did not get the complete narrative or the justification from Chris. All right. Next. Uh, those are CPA. Again, I think self-explanatory. I know um, the church steeple, they're meeting tonight. The playground equipment, um, Greg Lesage is doing a phenomenal job with recreation. And they, uh, through the help of Linda, discovered that they did have some, uh, was it a trust, Linda, where they had some uh, That's the George, uh, George Edwards funds. Um those have been around a while, remember George Edwards funds, but apparently with the change in, in uh, the park and rec commissioners and the staffing over the years, the, the uh, memory that they had such a fund um, did not get transferred across. And I didn't know they weren't aware of it, but yeah, they, had, they have some money. So they're kind of excited about some new projects. So I guess they'll be able to match with CPA, which is the way they want to work. And um yeah, should be good. So I, I guess I got a question. Uh, I didn't realize you could spend CPA money on, on non-governmental entities. Yeah, if it's recreation, yes. Most of it, it most of CPA money is for uh, municipal owned or anything that is agriculture uh, for low income. Uh, I think it's... Uh, for housing, housing, yep, and recreation is definitely on their priority list uh, well, to provide uh, funding. You know, like the steeple I'm looking at specifically too. Oh, I'm sorry, I thought you said governmental. You meant non-governmental. And non-governmental. Yeah, any, it's also oh. historic. So historic, if um, they really focus on the outside of a building, they will not restore things usually inside, but they can restore, and there is precedence. Um, uh, churches uh, throughout Massachusetts, stained glass windows restoration, steeple restoration. If it if it is enhancing and main, in um, uh, maintaining the historical look in a community, they will do that. We did another one uh, last year, the year before. It was another of the church steeples that we used the, the CPA money for, I believe. It was uh, North Hadley Congregational. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. And it was just voted not too long ago to uh, do first the, um, the, the steeple, the clock. So in the, one of the last town meetings, we voted um, to do the clock, to fix the clock. When they went up, now that it has been approved, when they went up to fix the clock, they realized that the beams and everything were um, in bad shape. So they, before they could fix the clock, now they have to restore a lot of the steeple itself. Thanks, Amy. Amy, you might be able to do the details of the rest of them better than me. <laughs> well, 
pretty good job. So the uh, the church that that's their second go around. Uh, Zaturka Park. That's just the equipment. Now the equipment that they tried to do before um, at Zaturka Park failed, but that was more of a gym. It was uh, for adults. This is just a small playground park. So that's all that is. It's it's a very small amount, and it's just a playground for little kids and some picnic tables. Um, there is a lot of question about the historical signs. That's one that came up for discussion um, because uh, according to some of the officials in Boston, they say, well, you can't really do signs. Well, in other communities, there has been signs. And so there's been questions on whether or not, so that might be something that comes up on whether or not you can do it or not. But um, I mean, it sounds right because it is historical. It's just been, that was probably the biggest one that people had a lot of questions about whether or not you can do it. I guess sometimes on some projects, they just, if it's, if it's part of a bigger project, it gets sweeped in sometimes. Um, the, uh, the Hockenham Cemetery, um, we've been doing all the cemeteries around town. So that's, that's just a continuous project. But the APR um, West property, that's one that we're doing tonight on CPA after this. So that's going on. It hasn't been voted on. All the others were done earlier, uh, probably about a few weeks ago. So. Where's that on Bay Road, that property or? Yeah. Yeah, it, they have set, they, this isn't the first uh, West APR, but I think it might be the third one or something like that. But I think it's his last piece of property that he wants to put in APR. Mm -hmm. So Amy, the CPA has approved all of them except for the historical signs or? No, historical did, it was a controversial one. And so it wasn't unanimous, but it was, it did go through it, it has been voted on. And so it did go to vote to recommend. Um, the only one that hasn't been voted on was the APR. Only because they submitted it late. Okay, I guess that sums up all the projects. And I guess our next step is probably to call Scott in and the schools and mm -hmm. uh, set up another meeting. You think one meeting is enough? One more? Do you think one more is enough? I think so. If, uh, you know, most of this seems pretty straightforward, actually, from my perspective. And it could be I good. have another questions, if you don't. Uh, uh, what are you going to do if, so I see the amounts of the borrowing, they're not within the levy. You have a few things in there, and then they're part borrowing so it'd be a debt exclusion and then part in water. What are you gonna do if they, what's plan B if they fail at town meeting for, um, and they don't get passed or if they fail at the ballot? I think that's, that's part of what this committee needs to decide is whether you want, mm -hmm. you know, whether this is something that you want to do, whether you're going to prioritize to the extent of putting things off until fall uh, whether you think anything is uh, so important that it um, and so important and doesn't fit within the levy, uh, if you want to go for debt exclusion, th th these are these are your decisions as to what we do with this uh, with these requests. I think it will help when we talk to Scott next week to help us, you know, see through this mm -hmm. to uh, get our priorities straightened straight with this and go from there I think. right Scott, scott's really um he his he's got a good thought process with all of it you know this is not everything that dpw nor hadley needs but he has he knows what we can do on the side trying to prepare for some of the culvert repairs and we have a couple things a couple whether they're grant opportunities or i'm meeting with representative carrie uh this week um so he He's bringing to you, I think, the most critical. It's not everything, but he understands that what you can't possibly fund it all probably this 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 meeting. Um, but I think uh, having all of you be able to listen to him, like Paul said, and decide and, and knowing you know what what Hadley um, is ready for all at once in the uh, this annual town meeting or in the fall. 
Carolyn, um, I think as far as Representative Kerry, you know, when they do their their budget bills or their spending bills and they can add on a, you know, kind of earmarked funds for the town. Like I think we did that with the, the generator at one point or, or something similar. Mm -hmm. uh, can you check to see if that's something he would be interested in doing, say for the drainage project or even the mower for, you know, maintaining the commons, something, something along those lines that maybe would free up some of that possible capital money to maybe put toward, you know, the loader or the sand or something along those lines? Yeah, I was actually going to show him this this right here and let him know we can't afford all this, but it's all critical, okay. and see what he knows what the, what the you know what the appetite is at the state level um, because I do and this isn't on this capital plan, but I I do want to start talking more about dike maintenance. Um, it's a real focus uh, that I I'd, I'd like to start um, you know educating the community as well as um, work, you know, continue working with uh, Rich Niles, uh, who's doing the, the assessment of the levy and the dike. So I, I also want to kind of feel that out too, because we do, I put a maintenance plan in the operating budget for 7,000, but the real maintenance, the, the best, you know, maintenance that we could bring quickly to where we need to be to, to work towards um, having that um, dike be where it's supposed to be. Um, is, you know, is in the hundreds of thousands. So, um, you know, I, I, I want to continue to talk with the, this capital committee about that in the next couple of years. And then um, also if, if, if he sees opportunities for funding for that, um, to put, put that on his radar to let me know. I, I have, I do have the engineers, they have a whole fundraising group or, or uh, grant writing group that tries to find sources. Um, and they've, they've already found me, um, the Army Corps, who's put together a group to help educate the public. So I'll be working with that in the next year. But I just wanna keep that on um, this committee's mind that we have to really start uh, upping the game with maintaining the dike. Um, we, have, we have other sources. We do have the infrastructure bill coming out. Linda is gonna be um, listening to a webinar um, about how to access those funds, how you're eligible. We're hoping we're not going to be, you know, the criteria isn't going to be what it was for ARPA, which was based on our community, not based on the size of our community or the amount of traffic that we have on Route 9. So there are other sources, um, but um, this really is going to be, I'm going to be using this as well as my cheat sheet. I'm always going to try to go to other resources first. And one of our own resources we talked about in the fall that we were hoping we'd be able to access for annual town meeting, but we're going to have to put it off again is whether there's balance in the three building accounts that we have fully um, the, the uh, cons new construction building accounts, the uh, senior center, the North Hadley fire station and the library. Um, we were hoping that um, in the fall that by now that we would have definitive balances that everything would be spent and then we would know how much is left over and that we could redirect some of that borrowing into other some of these items we don't have that available right now i think each one of them had a reason that they weren't quite ready carolyn and has to do with the roofs uh, with the library and the whether they can solar roof on senior center and there was something pending with the fire station too each of them had something so just keep in mind we hope that we're going to have a few hundred thousand dollars left over between the three of them, but we don't know which one and we don't know how much. So we're just going to have to wait for now, unfortunately. And those funds, Linda, they've actually been borrowed, yeah. correct? Fully, yes. Yeah. All right, nice. Okay, so why don't we... Uh, I got a few more, it, it's just a couple more quick ones. I'm sorry, Paul. Well, oh, go right ahead, Amy. So. I just a couple things I wanted to ask. Um, you know, I, you know, I, I wanted to see, you know, see if we we're going to really focus on putting money into this capital stabilization. I want to go back to that. You know, see us putting money there. I wanted to see. I thought the schools were under possibly some grant money. I thought last time we talked and the police wrote up something and they actually included, I thought the schools with some technology with a lot of the techn technology stuff. So I didn't know if that 
was completely separate or just computers, but I know he wrote up this great grant and oh. I thought it was to cover him and yeah. other departments. Yeah, and that was the community compact grant and they only got funding, um, it, very small uh, funding. And I don't, think, I don't think any of it went to the schools. None of it went. Okay. I don't think so. I think it all went to police and it wasn't even a lot. Okay. So the other thing is, um, it would be great down the road. I mean, we used, um, if we could have that again, we used to have the long term where we had everybody in all the 10 years and I was seeing the whole thing. I don't really, I'm, con it, it, I'm just a little thrown because I just see just this one little thing. How about the, the whole um, plan that we used to have? Um, it would, I don't have that in front of me. Um, so I'll, part of it was working with DPW in its new dynamic. And uh, Chris left at a crucial time. So transitioning this to uh, DPW was hours every um, week just to get us to this point. We weren't in a place to put together for the DPW aspect to put together um, any, anything longer than just this year. But it is one of our, our desires is to do a five-year plan. Um, it, we've, we've followed it, Hadley's followed it pretty well, but some of the things aren't even on the plan any, shouldn't be on the plan that are on it anymore. So it really needs to be totally revamped. Um, I think police and fire felt the same way. I really think COVID and the uncertainty of with what's coming up in the next year or two, not knowing what the cost of supplies and demands and things like that are going to be. Each department was hesitant to look beyond this year, but we've, we all in every conversation said we are going to work on towards that next year will be a little bit managerial wise more stable. And so we will have a plan knowing who's doing what and what's next. But we'd, we would not, we, we would have given you a piece of paper that I would, could not stand by and say that it was a realistic prediction of forecasting out five, 10, even, I, I know I've seen a 30 year plan, so. Yeah. We had a good 10 year one when we went in for the bond rating review. And I think that um, there have, wasn't, a, that was in 19. And then in 20, um, we, we had moved along and we had another 10 year plan. I have to say, even at that time, the first five years were very valuable. And the second five years, the, you know, this year six to 10 were just repeat the same items, you know, repeated. And, and it was just, I guess. So actually I would, I would suggest that we don't bother with uh, that. We, we stick with a five-year plan and make it a solid five-year plan and, and not just have it going out there just because we can. Um, and the other thing that happened with that five-year plan is, um, as we moved through it pretty well each year, it always involved debt exclusions. We have not passed a debt exclusion for at least two years, maybe a little bit longer. And then what happens is those items bunch up. And so what we used to do is take what didn't pass this year and we put it into next year and then we put it into the following year and it all bunched up in the third year. And we have to basically start through and go through that again. Um, and many of it was DPW items. Again, we keep coming back to that, but we have to like, you know, put all these things out on the table again and say, what's uh, all right, let's, let's start over what, what's going to be done. Um, what needs to be done? Uh, what's your priority? Because every time we've, every time we've changed DPW directors, and I think this has been three times and I've only been here uh, seven years. Mm -hmm. Um, they come in and say, I don't want that. I want this <laughs> a different kind of a truck, a different kind of a loader. So they do have their own priorities. So yes, that's another project. And, and, and Amy, I completely, I'd like to three, see a three-year budget too. I think that knowing what we're voting on this year based on where we're going over the next couple of years is really important. And um, it's not, it hasn't not been done because we don't think it's important. It's just, we'll get there working on it. <laughs> Got the budget book done this year. Though. We just, we're just getting, we're getting to these things as, as we can. Well, I totally agree with you, Linda. I think that a five-year plan is, is sufficient. You go out to 10 years, the further out you go, the more blurry it gets. And, uh, it never turns out that way, as Carolyn pointed out too. You look at the projects that were proposed for a 10 year and when that 10th year comes, it's a, it's a whole different animal mm -hmm. by the time you get there. So 
just begs the question then why are you doing this for 10 years when five years seems to work and it gives you a more sharper picture so uh this may be putting the cart before the horse here but uh, as far as the capital stabilization goes um too late for annual town meeting but for special town meeting i'd like just to, us to think about maybe taking some seed money from stabilization and getting a town meeting vote to say move it into a capital stabilization and you know in the past the select board for, i think for a while there we had a goal of what seventy five thousand in free cash that we would keep on hand was kind of what mm -hmm. we pledged to. it was so i'd like to see us and obviously it's up to whatever future boards but um you know if we would pledge that x percent of free cash every year we would tuck away into into a capital stabilization. I think it'd give us a lot more flexibility here and we wouldn't be scrambling for debt exclusions and you know putting off these projects for decades. Right. <laughs> Guaranteed funding source. Right. Right. And, and we could think about that in some of the new areas. I know the reason that the, the method that got started in the first place was with the ah, was it the meals tax? I think the meal I see Susan. Okay. Got it. See her head. Yeah, it started with the meals tax, and then it did get absorbed into the budget. Um, but I was just going to suggest the cannibal, the cannabis. Yeah, tuck it right out of my mouth. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah, that's that's another possibility. Uh, it's hard for us because we see that money in receipts, and we know we need it in the budget, and we go, mm, and we we want it back. Um, but this is part of the global, the, the bigger picture planning. And, you know, this is why we need financing and capital planning committee sort of to weigh in and, and, uh, and help with that big picture um, too. But yeah, that is a possible source. Um, we have in, in lieu of capital planning, that's when we've been doing the, uh, the increases in the borrowing within the levy allocations that has happened the last couple of years. I think it's resulted in a, a total of uh, either 150 or 200,000 more that we're spending in that kind of a borrowing, but capital stabilization. Yeah, we, we should, we should have that. I, I would, it, being on both the finance and capital, I, I really would like to see the um, more in the capital going in whether it be the cannabis, whether it be the free cash, I mean, I mean, the projects need to get done, but how to fund it is the question. But I rather see like the fire equipment in and in, in, in not move into place, places where we can't see what it, the equipment is that what you're purchasing. Um, I like to see those things because we, you know, and then when they when they're no good anymore and we replace them, I mean, we have a 10 year or we have a five year plan. I just it's easier to see if it's not a um, if it's a one time expense. I like to see it in the capital if they're if they're purchases um, and not in the operating budget, because then they get they get lost. You don't know. You don't know what they are as much. I just feel like they can get lost in there. And we have talked from time to time about um, a kind of an override that would actually directly feed uh, feed a, a stabilization on a regular basis. I don't, uh, capital stabilization. I don't know exactly how it works, and I don't know. And it would. I actually prefer some of these other methods because they're. I don't know. I don't know. It's, it's something to discuss. I, I, they're not dependent on residents. They're dependent on people coming into our town and using restaurants and motels and buying cannabis. <laughs> That's a good way to put it. Yeah. <laughs> Let other people pay for it. <laughs> okay. Any, anyone have anything else before we schedule our next meeting? Okay. What date looks good for all you folks? Uh, should we go two weeks or meet next week? Mm. What about the departments? What can they do? Because they're the ones that are going to be answering the questions, right? Yeah, basically, we only need Scott and uh, and the schools, right? Mm -hmm. We don't have a select board meeting next week, but we do the following week, I think. That's right. So next week could be better. I'm not sure. And Carolyn, are you tied up next Monday? 
Yes. This was a fluke that I didn't have a Monday. Yeah. Yeah. And finance, finance meets twice next week, Tuesday and Thursday. So the 29th, or a, would that work for everyone? We finance. have finance. Oh, finance is Tuesday? Tuesday and Thursday. For the next few, day, few weeks. <laughs> what about Wednesday of next week? Since we don't have a meeting. Yeah, I could do it. Everyone else? I unfortunately won't be there just because I have a work function on the 30th. Okay. Um, the, thir the, th um, the only other, uh, yeah, you just do it with, I guess you could do it without me. That's just the work function I have, but I won't miss that. The others are, we, they were finance committee meetings, so on the uh, Tuesdays and Thursdays, so we would. Um... Well, I, I think it's important that you're there, though, Amy, because I, if we're just doing one more meeting, we're going to be voting next next meeting. So, um, well, David, David, would you have a strong objection to the week after? No, I mean that's fine. I just uh, just try not to overload Scott and schools with meetings. That's all. Yeah. Well, finance meets twice that week too, but they are, they're going to wrap up on April 7th. Um, what if you handle, and the following week's completely open. What if you just uh, did all your meetings the weekend, uh, the week of April 11th? Do Capital Tuesday, Thursday that week. Wrap it up. Did finance schedule uh, a time with um, the DPW? Because maybe it makes sense to have a dual meeting. That's next. Tuesday. That's next Tuesday. It is Tuesday. That's interesting. Because they're the only thing that's they're that's they're everything. That's all they're doing. Tuesday. Right. So April eleventh or twelfth? Is that what you're saying? No, Carolyn, you March twenty nine. Back to March 29th. Finance Committee is doing DPW that night as well. We could do a joint meeting. What do well, you think, Amy? But are we thinking of maybe voting though too? No, because are you do you vote all you vote the whole capital we budget, should right? Vote, we vote as a block. Yeah. 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 So you won't have met with the schools yet. You, you want the warrant to go to town council on April 18th, Carolyn. I, I actually, yeah, that leaves the, the clean, the completely open week is the week of the of April 11th, since finance committees and select board are taking care of April 5, 6, and 7. Commit David, that cap, capital week. In David's meeting on the 6th, the board of selectmen? Yes. Did we meet on the fifth? Finance. Oh my God. Okay. The 13th of April is open to make a vote. If we want to do the 13th, April 13th. Well, we could probably do this in one meeting. You know, if we meet with the BPW and the schools, and then we could deliberate after. Uh, is there a select board meeting on the 13th? No. April. I think they're the sixth and the twentieth. Does that sound right? Yeah. We will. The finance will have already listened to the schools and would have listened to the DPW. You could cut. We could do like if you wanted to come and listen to the DPW and the schools. We could put it in that you can uh, join those two meetings, and then we can just put a quick vote on the thirteenth if you wanted to do that. Um. We could talk about in in the finance. We could talk about let, let them talk about their um, articles, um, their capital articles right away. First, um, finance will want to hear about them anyways because they put recommendations in. That's true. I just I just like having it 
you know, alone. So that way we have the time to really drill down into, you know, with yeah. questions. I, I feel like that's tough with a joint meeting on some of these things. That's all. Right. Yeah, I've always found joint meetings to be tough as well. That's why. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's different. So, so going back to the 30th, March 30th. No, you can't, Amy. That's right. Okay. Yeah, but we could have, if even if you did two meetings, like if you wanted to do, I mean, it's up to you if you didn't want to do two meetings. Because if you did one on the 30th where you can grill them um, as a, this is a group and then do a vote. <laughs> grill them. And this can we is change a that word, please? I know. That's kind of funny. To gather then, more uh, information. There we go. And then as a vote on the uh, April 13th, the more of voting, but um, I'm just saying, because I might not be there, but we, I would have gotten more information from them on the times mm -hmm. that I meet them on finance. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Us. Yeah, that makes sense, Amy, because you're going to hear at the finance committee meetings pretty much what we're going to hear at Capitol. Yes. And then you'll be there for the vote. If we hold it on the third, unless we if we unless we vote on the third, right? Well, how does that sound, everyone? We'll have a meeting on the thirtieth. Amy will hear it via her finance committee position. Plus, we're recorded. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's recorded. I think on the. Um, the 13th, it's not just about whether or not we want to do it, it's how we're going to fund it. And, and that's why I actually like to have it out to the 13th. The, the longer we wait, the more information we might have about um, other ways of, of funding. The more information we'll funding the alternatives we might have, I'm not sure, but the longer we wait, the better that possibility is. So push it off to the 13th and that gives, and that gives enough time to get the warrant all in and everything for the 18th, you said? That's what I have, Carolyn, that you're <laughs> it's going, it's got the 18th, it's going to legal. I have to have the warrant completely done. Um, but Linda, we were talking sometimes that, oh, well, articles, you're right, no, articles have to be some, I don't know. The wording's the biggest thing with legal, Linda. Can numbers be tweaked? Sure, but I, I we're still going to, the 13th will give us time, don't you think? Yes. I will be a little late, but um, you know, I don't know that you're going to need me the beginning of it. Oh, at that you're meeting? Gonna, yeah, okay. I just have an appointment at four that I have to go to. So I, I'll be a little late, but I don't think that's a, an issue. This is your meeting. Oh, okay, so let's do the 13th. 5 30. Everyone else okay with that? So on the 30th, you're Anyone? doing both of you're doing the DPW and the school on the 30th. I, on both of them. And then you're going the 13th is going to be how, what are what are we going to fund and how or the decisions will be made on the 13th. Taking votes. Yeah. Okay. Votes. Okay. So it's two meetings, right? The 30th and 30th the 13th. for presentations and the 13th for deliberations and votes. So I will check first thing tomorrow to make sure both those departments, uh, Annie and uh, Scott, are available. Perfect. And, and I be, assume, yes, will this be Zoom, Carolyn? I'm sorry, what'd you say? Will this be Zoom also? If that is your preference, I would have to Zoom the on the 13th. All right. Everyone else okay with that? We keep it as Zoom, both of them. Everyone? Yep. One yes. Yep. Two, three. Okay, let's keep it at Zoom. Both at 5.30. Yep. 
Mm -hmm. Okay. Any other business? Hearing none, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. All, right. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed? Hearing none, the meeting is adjourned at 641. Thank you very much, everyone.